Hi, I'm Erica Armstrong Dunbar, and I have the opportunity to spend some time with you today and to introduce you to Susie King Taylor. And I will be reading from this book for a little bit just to introduce you to her, to her words, to our words about her. When we entered the small sitting room, Mrs. Beasley was standing next to the fireplace, wearing a gown of navy blue with a pressed bow across the chest, the kind Mrs. Grest would special order from the shops in the city. Her curls were fastened in a loose bun atop her head. She stepped forward, her skirt swishing across the wooden floor. You must be Susie. I've heard such splendid things about you. She held her hand out between us, waiting for me to shake it. I stood there, suddenly too shy to move. Mrs. Beasley was unlike any woman I'd ever met before. It was uncommon for a woman to shake hands, especially with a child. I blinked up at Mrs. Woodhouse, who nudged me forward. Nice to meet you, ma'am. I said under my breath. I gripped the tips of her fingers and meekly shook her hand. No need to be timid. Mrs. Beasley gripped my fingers a little tighter, her smile widening. I hear your reading comprehension is impeccable and you show promise with arithmetic. Yes, ma'am. I rolled the word impeccable around in my head, trying not to forget it. I'd write it down in my tattered notebook later. I had a collection of good words, and something told me if I stuck with Mrs. Beasley, I'd fill my notebook up in no time. Would you like to continue your studies with me? Perhaps learn about geography along with some more literature? She tilted her head to the side, her eyes tightening slightly. The choice belongs to you. I frowned, so unsure. No one had ever given me a firm choice to make. Free will wasn't something I was used to. And this world of enslavers who held people in bondage I was usually told what I had to do, but in this moment, I was given power, the power to choose. I couldn't let this opportunity slip away, so I stood up straighter, squaring my shoulders like Mary Jane. I would like that very much, thank you. And I stepped forward, feeling bolder. I would like to read Shakespeare, I know a man named Shakespeare who has a long beard and drives a stagecoach. And he told me there were legendary stories written by a man of the same name. And I would like to know why folks call people from the North Yankees. And what is an abolitionist and hush, child. Mrs. Woodhouse squeezed my shoulder hard. Her eyes widened in horror as she met Mrs. Beasley's gaze. I got the impression that I'd said, a very dangerous word. But instead of looking as concerned as Mrs. Woodhouse, Mrs. Beasley raised a curious brow. I thought I heard a small chuckle escape her lips. Not so timid after all. Good. Mrs. Beasley flared her nostrils as she folded her arms. She appraised me for a moment. I'm not sure how much I can teach you. You may soon surpass my lessons. I blinked up at her, confusion swirling in my mind. I had only just agreed to learn under Mrs. Beasley's tutelage. What came after Mrs. Beasley? I'll settle it with your grandmother. You'll start next week if it suits. Mrs. Woodhouse placed her hand on my back and gently pushed toward the kitchen door. Now go on and get back to your work. When the school day was over, I grabbed my discarded paper off the floor and rewrapped my book. My younger brother did the same, 
Then we left the way we'd entered, slipping one by one through the back door. I waited for my brother about a block from the house near the old water pump. Then together we marched down the road, a bit quieter than we were on our journey there. I was deep in thought thinking about Mrs. Beasley and her fine dress, her impeccable dress. My brother gathered more laurel leaves on the way home. I even helped him this time. I only had a few more days to walk with him to school because come next week, I was graduating to a higher learning. Thank you for spending time with me and Susie King Taylor. I look forward to all of you having the opportunity to learn more about her, her courageous escape from slavery, her abilities that were unmatched, becoming a teacher and a nurse in the Civil War. Thank you.